God bless you in the name of Jesus, and we thank God this morning that we are here. We appreciate that is all the love and concern that God, whereby God has blessed us. And we know without a shadow of a doubt that he's going to continue that is to bless us. Amen. And, and, and really, it's a time whereby we all ought to be grateful, and we ought to be thankful of the very things that God is doing. He's moving us along, and we need to accept the fact that he really really is. So we say thank you this morning and we thank God for you. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you this morning for grace and mercy and for all of those great things that you have given and done unto us. We thank you, Lord, that we are your children and that you are our Father and you have blessed us again and again. And now, Father, Master, as we come, we ask that you would bless this service in a special kind of a way. Be with the saying, Lord. Be with the preaching. Be with the prayer. Be with every aspect of it. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Our scripture reading of the text that we will embark upon is coming from Philippians. That is the second chapter and the third verse that says, Let nothing be done through strife of vain glory, but in the lowliness of mind, let each each esteem others better than themselves. Let each esteem others better than themselves. Amen. So Tanya Henry's going to come to us at this time with our praise and worship. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. I am so glad that I was able to wake up. Savior. Isn't it a good thing 
Isn't it a wonderful thing to be able to be Christ-like? Amen. And I'm so glad. I'm so glad I counted that is the cost. It's time for prayer. And God has, I know without a shadow of a doubt, we have much, we have much to pray about. Believe it or not. I was counting the people that had COVID in our congregation, and it's about 20. And then since the time of the COVID, we lost at least six to seven people that is. They crossed over and gone on the other side and to be with the Lord. And so I'm praying that God would just continue that is to bless us. Remember Shamako and his other people that we need to remember. Remember my wife in a very special way. And my son, we ask that you would remember them. And I'm not quite sure that there's others since we didn't, uh, not able to take prayer requests. But what we're going to do now is we're going to ask Sister Tommy to come again with a prayer song. And immediately after that, we're going to ask Sister Doris Turner to lead us to the throne of grace. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
we thank God that this is uh, the uh, this is uh, February, and we thank God that we can celebrate uh, that is the month of February, the Black History, and God has blessed the many of us that is to be here. You know about the toil and the suffering of slavery, and then not only that, you know about the past and the future, and not only that, but the road that we trod oh, in order to get here. Amen. We're going to ask uh, Sister Turner to come again, and she wanted to share something concerning black history. The name of this poem is called, My Heart Belongs to Africa. Amen. This poem is a poem that I've written for my next book that is due to come out in May. Africa has always been my heart since 1984, which was the year I met my dear friend Ransom, who came from East Africa. Intrigued by the drums, fascinated with the move of their feet when dancing, it tells a story. And the style of the clothing they wear all gives me a connection with my ancestors. Oh, how beautiful the colors they wear, which is a symbol that reminds me that I am made up of different regions all across this magnificent world. I am 43% Nigeria, 26% Cameroon, Congo, and South Bentu people too. 18% Maui, 3% Senegal, 10% of other regions, which is mixed with Ireland, Scotland, Norway, Ghana, Portugal, and also Spain. I am mixed with a lot of nationalities, as you can see, so colorful and so free. I am proud to be a part of the motherland from whence I come. So now that my ethnicity is established, my heart and soul belongs to the beat of the drum. My skin is black. My head is long. My nose is wide. And my curves remind me that I
Amen. What a word already. I don't believe you brought me this far to leave me. Although I've gone through many dangers, toys, and snares, but God is not going to leave me. Now, the text I read before is not really the one I want. The one I want is the one that's from Matthew. That is the seventh chapter, and I believe it's the twelfth verse that reads this. It says, therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law. This is the law and the prophets. Law and the prophets. Amen. I want to talk this morning, since this is a black, uh, this is a uh, black history service. I want to talk about the black tiger. The black, the black tiger. Amen. As we approach this Black History Month, and I know that we have a past, it's a tre tremendous past, amen. And it's one that's worth talking about as we talk about our achievements. And not only that, it's, it's customary for us to talk about that is our past and our achievements that is of African Americans, amen. And then say that we are still suffering, that is, we suffer as we, as African Americans, that is from the ripples, that is of slavery. And because of our enslavement and our enslaved mentality that is in the beginning, we are still in what we call the recovery room. And some believe that a lot of us, we have never ever recovered from that, recovered from the, that, that is from the uh, mistreatment and the hatred and the prejudice, amen. And we need to uh, recover from the surgery of all of that. Amen. We need to recover from being second-class citizens, believe it or not. But I want to take a different approach this morning. Amen. And to let you know this, that hurting people hurt other people. Did, did you hear me? Yes, sir. Hurting people hurt other people, believe it or not. Amen. And, 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 and it is time that is for us, the people that is for us, especially as African American, to turn to one another and not turn on one another. Did you hear what I say? And it's time for us to do what? Turn to one another and not turn on one another. Now, as I mentioned uh, in the past, amen, that our African Americans, you know, we have done many things here in America. We have made some of the greatest inventions and achievements in history that has ever been known. And a lot of them are never ever talked about. And may I pause and just say this, that I'm proud to be an African American. I'm proud to be, and I'm proud to be black. But now, there are some things, amen, that trouble me, and that is in many cases, amen, why do we turn on one another and never turn to one another? You see, there was a painful truth that African American, amen, some say are what they call violent people. And we talk about the black on black crime. But now let me uh, be careful and not to mention that is on January 6th of this year, I saw some white on white crime. Come on, I don't know about nobody else, but every now and then I look around and see what's going on that is in America. And, and I get depressed when I hear the news, believe it or not, and when they call the road and they call, and they talk about how many people been raped and stabbed and carjacked and kidnapped and all of that. And what they do is they never forget to show a mugshot of the African American. And sometimes we say, well, they just run to our neighborhood and they just make sure that they get some coverage on us, but we need to stop doing things in order to give them some coverage. I, I, I don't mean no harm, but we got to tell the truth. And it's a painful reminder, believe it or not, that most of us are hurting. But the thing about it is, hurting people does what? They hurt other people. They actually do. I myself, and I'm a witness of that, believe it or not. Now, now I want to tell you a story about the Black Tide. There was a family who was uh, associated with the service, with the circus, excuse me, and they, they raised the baby and the tiger happened to be black, believe it or not. Oh, the tiger was something lovely and so meek and kind and great big. And it would let out growls of love and all of that. You understand? The tiger, the tiger had a meek spirit. And it was what I call a spirit of loneliness. And it could play with children. And it was never poised to fight. But the 
strap back. That is at the children. But one day, one day, all of that changed all of a sudden. You understand? And the spirit of nature began to change, you understand? The tiger took on a gloss in, it, in his eyes, believe it or not. And his face no longer was a cheerful face that is to the children or anybody else. And then he started striking out with this pole at everybody, even the children. Lord have mercy. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You see? And that family says, uh, as it went on and on, we're going to have to do something that deals with the tiger. Amen. So the family uh, called in uh, for the tiger, that playful, once upon a time, playful tiger to have what they call a physical. They said this tiger needs to have a physical examination because there's something wrong that is with the tiger. Amen. And something had to be wrong. And while that is the veterinarian was examining the tiger, he found a wedge that is something like a thorn, a great big thorn that was in the tiger's paw, believe it or not. He pulled it out to see if the tiger would act different immediately. Uh -huh. I mean immediately. Uh -huh. The tiger started acting what? Different. Yes, the tiger changed and became that loving, that loving and harmful tiger that it once was. The tiger, the tiger became loving, a very loving tiger again. Amen. And the tiger would not hurt people or strike out people or strike at our people any longer. Because people who are hurting, guess what they do? They hurt other people. Y'all yes, ain't got it yet? People who are hurting, believe it or not, they hurt other people. Now there's also a great number of people, amen, that will strike out at one another because you are hurting. You are hurting. And some of us as African Americans, maybe because we are so violent, maybe we are hurting, maybe we are angry, maybe there's something that's wedged up in us that we have partaken of that is on the inside of us that would cause us to strike out one at one another because of the pain of that wedge of that home. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing that the moment they took it out of the tiger's paw, the tiger became loving again. It's something, something that is to carry around so much pain on the inside. There's something that needs to be extracted that is for many people. And I'm not only talking about African Americans now. I'm talking about everybody, black, white, Jew, and Gentile. There's something in us, believe it or not, that makes us strike out at one another. We need to do something about it. We de definitely need to do something about it. Lord have mercy. We're striking out at one another. We're being so violent. We're hurting. We're angry. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? And then we ask, what is wrong with America? What is wrong with America? What's going on? You understand. And I can understand the dehumanizing that is of slavery. And, and the stripping us of us years ago and putting us on the slavery block and selling you and examining your teeth and your eyes as if you was an animal. You may as well say amen because they did it. They did it. Then they had what they call a seasoning post that they would tie you to and they would whip the skin out of you in order to discipline you. Now I know some of y'all don't want to hear this if you don't believe it, but it happened in and out. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You understand? They beat, they would beat you into submission. Am I right? Amen. You see, in any public beating is humiliating. Am I right? I sure didn't like it when I was in the store, and my mama used to wrap me up every nine minutes in front of everybody. She didn't care if your girlfriend was looking, your friends or whatever. You understand? That public humiliation. You understand? If you go with me, I used to say, take me home, take me home, take me home and give me a pride and beat. Oh no, but back in the day, they would tie you to a whipping pole. Yeah. Do y'all get that? Yes, sir. And they would make sure, they would make sure that they would season, that they would season you to the point whereby you would never do that again. Lord have mercy. Now there's also a term called cultural transmission. And that's the passing down that is from generation to one generation to another. It's a way of life. And, and some believe that the slaves passed down that hidden anger that they had from generation to generation. Amen. When the slaves uh, were free, they passed all kinds.
kinds of gentleism and they pass all kinds of things down to their ancestors. And some of the tactics that was used on them, they decide to use on one another. You understand? But we have to do what turn to one another, amen, and not turn on one another, Brother Lester. There's enough of that going on. There's enough of racism in all of this going on right now. Lord have mercy. And because of that, a lot of people have hidden insecurities and jealousies and they have all kinds of things in their life, believe it or not. And, 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 the thing, and not only that, but they feel like uh, they're at a place in life whereby nothing can happen to change the situation. You understand? In this kind of spirit, you have to be very careful whereby you lash out at somebody. And this angry spirit means that you are angry, but you're turning your anger on somebody else. We need somebody in some place to do what? Vent our anger. Don't be like the black child. Amen. You see, many of us are angry. Amen. Because we are reminded of our past, you understand? Over 400 years ago, we've been re um, reminded of how uh, we still are what? Institutionalized, we have institutionalized racism and systemic unfair treatment is going on in America. Still, we still have that. You know what I mean? Now, I don't mind being reminded of my past. Uh, uh, amen. So, so there's some things in my past I don't want to talk about. Yes, sir, me too. Me too. Yes. No, I don't want to talk about y'all. I just don't want to stay there for a long time. You see, because it makes you angry all over again. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? And we're saying in many cases that nothing can be done about it. Amen. You see, I remember years ago we used to go to the store and they had used to have a store detected before we got all of these surveillance here to follow the African American around and make sure that you didn't take anything and you didn't rob them blind. And the tragedy is that uh, uh, right now that is around the world, believe it or not, we still have misguided anger and we have people that are still watching us all over America, believe it or not. And a lot of them are saying, you know what I mean? Well, what's wrong? What's wrong? You all cannot charge us for what our ancestors have done. But my only question is, why are you living off the fumes of your ancestors and doing the same thing your ancestors were doing? Ain't nobody gonna say amen to that. Why is that happening? You understand? You see, I never shall forget the Martin Luther King, amen, who believed in non-violent and they decided to put him to death. Poor, poor King, I remember it, when he got assassinated and there was a lot of burning and there was a lot of anger, you understand, believe it or not. And that spirit of anger, we got to admit that it needs to go. But not only with the African American now, it needs to go with everybody. You understand? Don't just pick at us. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Because there's a lot of things that you can get angry, you get angry over in the past. If you're not careful, you're going to lash out at somebody, believe it or not. You understand? The African-American male has been looked upon with suspect. Amen. And folks are afraid of us sometimes, believe it or not. You see, some folks are just, just, just ready. That is to put us in, to put us out. You understand? You angry. And they will say with you, it's wrong. It's wrong. Still wrong again for you to try to punish me for what my ancestors have done. Have done. Well, well, you're still enjoying some things that you were enjoying a long time ago. I'm so glad that we had a hand, believe it or not, in building a, a America. Amen. We were contractors, but we couldn't be contractors like everybody else. We were called black contractors. You were called African-American contractors. You were called minority contractors. What is a minority contractor when people your slaves build the White House? What is a minority contractor? Y'all need to show me one of them. That's what I want to see. Y'all understand? Lord have mercy. Amen. But this anger, it has to go. Believe it or not. We have to turn to one another and not turn on one another. Amen. Doing the unspeakable thing that is against one another it has to stop. Amen. You see, we have to stop the abuse. The abusiveness needs to stop. The physical and the mental abuse, it needs to stop. Believe it or not, the insults and the temper tantrum and all of that. The continuous criticism because somebody's always waiting to criticize one another. Amen. Fast as you can get over one wound or one strap. Or you can get over one harsh word, here comes another. Amen. You see, now, 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 I'm already hurting because I'm in pain, and the pain is so great. And then here come you, 
amen, along beside me and you bring in some more pain. It's time for us to open a new chapter. Okay. Amen. That's everybody. Everybody. Don't drop it in the African American community. It's everybody. If you don't believe it, as I say, why does six people have to die? Excuse me, uh, five or six people had to die January 6th. You understand? A man got through, lost three of his fingers, and then not only that, two committed suicide. Why did that have to happen? Why did it have to happen? Because there's something with that up in you whereby God needs to give you a physical. Mm -hmm. He needs to give you a physical examination. There's something needs to come out of you. And oh, how we need to learn how to respect one another. I'm talking about every township. I'm not just talking about my place in life. We need to learn how to respect one another. Amen. I'm so glad that Dr. King came along with the civil obedience and not only that, but the nonviolent spirit. Amen. If you want really an example of being nonviolent, you need to look to, to, to Dr. Martin Luther King, who died for what he believed in. He went to Memphis, Tennessee to see that, that is those that were, were, were working that is in, in, in the place of taking care of all the waste around the city to get them a raise and he died for how much? 10 cent. After he died, they gave them a 10 cent raise. He died non-violently for 10 cent. And y'all walk around here talking about talking about uh, uh, Oh, you know what? The African American name is too bad. I see a whole lot of violence in America. I do. I see a whole lot of Americans. And I'm so glad, glad that God was able to bless us. Amen. We need to respect one another. Amen. We need to respect everybody. And that's why I hear the word saying, you need to do unto others. That's what Matthew 7 and 12 said. That you will have people to do Unto you. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You need to do unto earth. You understand? Jesus said, Love your neighbor as yourself. You take yourself to nothing. You beg yourself. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You take yourself out to get a job. You understand? You know how to speak good uh, uh, good words to people. You know, you know what I'm talking about? You know how to have good social skills. He said, If you do that to yourself, he said, love the neighbor as yourself. And you will, if you're going to live in America, you got to have a healthy, a healthy self. I thank God for the miracle, for the miracle of love, of love. Because there's too many unpleasant people who are walking around. The black tie is an example that says there may be something inside of you that needs to be extracted. You need to take it out. We pray sometimes, Lord oh God, if there's anything in me, you need to get rid of it. But do you really mean that? What about the hatred and the prejudice? What about that thorn of an unloving spirit that's way up in your paw? That God needs to reach in. And he needs to take it out. To take it out. But let us move on. And Sister Tommy said, I'm not no way it's tired. I'm not giving up. Because I've been made by the immortal day that he himself. It is he that is made up. And no other race or person made me but God. I don't know nobody else that made me. What about you? And I'm going to follow him. And if he says to do unto us as you would have them do unto you, then we need to do that. God is a good God, isn't he? Yes, he is. And we love him and we love him. And we love God and all of the things that he has done for us, especially that is the African-American race. As you look back over your life, you can remember all of the things that happened. Yes, we were the last time and the first time. Yes, we used to sit on the back of the bus. I remember when I was a boy, they had a little old section in the hospital that said color. And one day I wandered away from there. I was about six, five years old. And I came into this beautiful room where there was air conditioning. There wasn't no air conditioning where I was going to like. And where people had beautiful couches and flowers and everything. And I said, my, 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 my. I wanted to stay there. But that's all right. I got there one day. And we thank God for that. God love you and God bless you. Don't forget the black tie. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. We thank God for that encouraging word on today. Celebrating Black History Month, Lord. Not only just a month, we celebrate Black History every day. Thank God. I think we know. Dr. Rivers had made a statement talking about Black History. He said, America, Blacks love America, but America doesn't seem to love the Blacks. But we can love ourselves. We thank God for that. He said, to know, to look to the videos from which come our help. Shall we be with me? Father, we bless your name Amen. today. And God, we were reminded that, Lord, you said you came to die not just for white folks, but we died for everybody. And we can have that right to the tree of life. And we thank you and we praise you. We thank you for the black church. We thank you for who we are, Lord, and what you have allowed us to become. Now, God, we ask you to bless our pastor, Lord. Continue to encourage him, Lord. Continue to encourage the members of this congregation. We pray that God that they will continue to be encouraged. Even in the midst of this pandemic, Lord, we're going to continue to look to you who is the author and finish of our faith. Now, God, we ask you to continue to move by your spirit in this place, and not only in this place, but in our lives. God, we'll give you all the praise and all the glory for us in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now, if you want to be a part of this congregation, as far as giving, Lord, we have to give no five that you can do that. Also, you can send a put a check in the mail. 17401 Joseph Campo 48212. We thank you. We praise your name for all that you, that you do, Lord. We ask you to continue to remember. Lord, those that are not well in this congregation as well, as those that might be listening and experiencing some difficulties. We thank you again for those that have tuned in on this program. Hopefully, you've been inspired. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.